Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the 8 Bit Retro Refix. And in this week's episode, we've got an Atari 2600. This Atari 2600 has been sent in by Paul Willis from Twitter. Um, he's seen my videos and got in touch with me and wanted me to have, take a look at this for him. Um, I have tested it, it is working. I'll stick a few pictures up there for you to show you that. But what we're going to do with it is we're going to install this. This is the composite mod. I have never been inside one of these Ataris before. Um, I certainly haven't used this mod before. And this mod comes from um, the future is 8-bit. It's quite good. It works for quite a lot of um, it works for quite a lot of units. Um, it works for the that's a 7800. Um, that one up there is the 2600 NTSC. Uh, on this side we have the 2004 switch and the 2600 4 switch, sorry, and this PAL 2600 um, 4 switch NTSC. And over on this side, this is the Atari 2600 Junior PAL, um, which Paul has kindly sent me one in, donated this into the channel. So we'll be taking a look at that at a later date. Um, the one that we're looking at is over the leaf here, I think. I don't know, I'm just going off what we've got off the top, which is Atari 2600 6 switch PAL. Uh, we need to remove resistor 209, um, 201, 202 and 216 and soldering these four wires in these points down here. So that's what we're going to do right after the intro. Right, so first of all, what we've got to do is flip it over. Um, I've already taken these screws out of the bottom. Um, there's one up there, one in there, one in there, one in there, one in there, and one in there. So it looks like we've got six screws there, and there's two here that hold the main frame down as well. So they're a bit shorter than ones. Um, I've just taken them out, just to save us a little bit of time. You don't want to see me screwing. Um, they're all over there with the screws, look. So this is what we got when we flipped the lid off. So that comes off nice and easy. So it looks quite basic and obviously we can't see anything on this side of the board. Um, so what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to reposition the camera so I can be able to work a little bit easier rather than being stood behind this camera. Um, and then I'll come back to you and we'll dismantle a little bit further. Right, okay. So going for this composite mod, um, I'm believing that it's going to be near the RF box around this area here. But we won't know that until we get the unit right out. Um, you can see these wires that go onto that board. I don't know where I'm going to place this as yet. So first of all, I think we should take the OWL RF cable out. It should just come up out of there easy enough. Right, so that's the RF gone this is this is loose because we took them two screws out from the middle ones you remember we were telling you about the short ones that held this base unit down that's what we've had to do um, to release this so i can flip this up now and the whole unit completely comes out so we still can't see really where this is anywhere so we're gonna have to do a little bit more digging and i think i'm gonna remove this plate and we'll take a look she comes <laughs> we still can't really see what there is to do so where else do we go all right let's take this off the top of here pull that out of there that separates this main unit from here Keep them separate again. Right, 
so that should just lift off and that's just the switches before I rebuild it I'm going to put some deoxide into these um, then we'll have a look at see this look like one of these little rubber pads look that seems to be missing off that one um, so we'll have a look and see if I can do something with that so let's just set that to one side for the minute what have we got here does this come out of here yes it does there's two more screws down the bottom here so let's take a look see if we can find the right place for this lot so it's telling me where it says rev b on the board down at the bottom if we look at that paper you can see there 1987 rev b across the bottom of that board there so somewhere we've got rev b so it is over here so this is where this is the area that we're going to be working in so let's have a look so we need to remove resistor this one which is 209 which is over here um, 201 we can find that one that's 202 so that one needs to come out as well 202 just there and 201 should be here somewhere is it 207, 206, capacitor cap, that's 202, 216, that's 223, why is it showing? Seems a little bit strange. That's 201. This adjuster that has to come out. That's 201. So we've got that one and that one. And this one. I'm looking at the picture, looking at the picture, it comes to the bank of these, all the way across this side to this last one. And looking at that, uh, uh, 216, that's the one, yeah. So that one's to come out as well. So we're going to take this off, that one, that one, and this one. That's what we're going to lose first. So time to get the desolder station fired up and some flux out. And let's start removing them resistors. Right, so as temperatures up on the desolder station, and if anybody wondering what desolder station I'm using, I'll stick a little picture there for you. Um, it's an Anesty ZD915. Um, it, really inexpensive, I think it was only about 70 80 pounds or something. That was a long time ago. But these things, they, they really do help um, in what we're doing today. So, right, I'm going to go for um, R109, which is at the side of here, first. So what I do with these solder guns is, I watch everybody going this way on them, but uh, solder doesn't roll, run uphill, really. It runs downhill. Um, so for me, I find it a lot easier um, if I'm just tilting the board over this side, like this pull it out that way yeah, that's all I do is get behind the pin let the pin loose and wiggle it around a little bit and keep wiggling if it doesn't come off um, what we're best doing is, is just putting a little bit more solder on it sounds a little bit counterintuitive um, but when you put a little bit of solder on 
sort of put some new f f solder in there obviously um, and it allows the flux to work in a little bit easier um, you don't have to use a solder gun if you don't want you can use a desolder station it's warm enough um, to just go onto the edge and just feed the solder straight in and it should just um, take really easy which that one has so just buzz away at that one now right so that resistor just fell straight out now did you see that i'll fetch it up for you look you can have a look so that resistor dropped straight out the holes are really nice and clean it's come straight out at this side as well look so that's a really nice neat job and that's what these desolder stations do so I'm going to carry on now, um, I'm going to try and get this big pillar off because we don't need this anymore, the adjuster, um, and we'll see if that comes straight off as well. So I'm just going to go into a bit of a montage now and I'll come to you when I've got all these resistors out. So while the iron's warming up, we'll just move that to one side. We'll take a look at this switchboard. Take these sponges off. Not got a lot of dioxide left, but we're gonna put some in there anyway. Just to give that a little bit of a free up. Same with the others. Very, very difficult to see on the picture. So going off this picture, I'm looking and it looks like that point there, right next, and it's on that tran transistor in there. So I think Q202 is this one, which is telling me to remove. I'm a little bit of a loss now, so I'm going to have a look at this picture. You see, Q202 is not a resistor. That resistor is R1, R210. So Q202 is that, is that. So looking at the picture, I have to remove that transistor. I'm going to try and do that with the soldering iron because I've put the other thing away now, haven't I? Right, I've just done that off camera because uh, it's a lot easier and a lot quicker. So I believe that this is going to be now a ground. Right, I've done that off camera because it was doing my editing. Um, I've found a better picture that shows us where that black wire goes. So what I'm going to do is pop that up now and you can have a look at that and you can see where that black wire goes. It just goes above that capacitor. You see the chip on the bottom left corner? You can see that capacitor there that says Z5U. Underneath that Z5U, it should say C238, and it's the pad just above it, which you can see, just see in that picture, can't you? So we've got a yellow wire there running down to the bottom of resistor 216. We have a black for us ground down, and you can see the white running over there to resistor 209. And we have red that went into the left side of this coil. Looks like it's a, an adjuster of some form in there. 
which I took out that wrong a wrong resistor. I didn't have my other glasses on and I, and I read it as a, a resistor, but it's not, it's Q202. Q202 is a transistor. A little bit bent on my old legs there, but we'll just pull them straight again. Until it's all together, I think, no they're not. Just in case. So we've got them out. So we've removed this resistor 209, 201, transistor 202, sorry, L01, L, L201, uh, Q202, which is the transistor, and the 22126 down at the bottom here. So I lifted these screws out here and just wiggled that wire straight up underneath that cartridge pot and then we'll have a look see where we're going to put that in a minute. So what I'm going to do now um, is just going to rattle through and, and build this all back together uh, and we'll see if it works at the end of it and we'll have a comparison because I took some pictures last time when, when we were running on RF to see what the quality out of it was on RF. Um, so I've taken some pictures. Um, so we can do like for like match up um, and see what the quality looks like now it's on composite and um, we'll have to have a look this is your little adapter this is the great big cable that comes with it for that to plug into there so I'm gonna have to see if we can find somewhere nice for that to sit and something that's sort of like not non-intrusive if we can um, but yeah, so let's get it back together um, and then I'll come back to you once it's done Right, okay, so I've had a quick look to see what we do with this um, I was thinking about mounting it um, Cutting that tag off up top of there and mounting it at the back because there's a nice little hole there And then I realized that this plastic is way too big So I thought well, I'll have a look online and see what the others have been doing with this unit to be able to attach this down and what I've found that they've done is they've taken the cable that's come with it, this cable, and what they've done is they've fed it up inside there, through there, through that bit. side there, round that pillar there, into that pillar there, into that pillar there and then we're just sitting it. What we're going to do is sit it over here. I don't right like it like that. So I think what I'm going to do is clean this up around here. Um, I'm going to fire the hot glue gun up and we're going to stick this into there so it doesn't come back out again. I don't really like using hot glue, um, but I think it's just it's just something to retain it into place without it dropping out and falling about and flopping around everywhere. So I think that would be a wise idea um, to do that. I'm going to tie that in a knot. I think I'll tie that in a knot there, just to stop it from pulling through. Be better, I would have thought. Pull that through there, put that around that side, down there like that so it can't pull on it. Feed that into the slot there, as tight as it'll go. That around to that side there, that into there. There should be a glue that into place now so it don't go wobbling around everywhere. So I don't really like looting hot glue, but... So that's the hot glue in. I don't really like it, it looks a little bit messy. Um, but it just, just holds the cable in place. People don't like using hot glue because I think it leaves a mess. 
um, if you don't know about it then using IPA on hot glue will bring it off um, you just keep working it and it'll go underneath it and it will lift um, and remove the glue with the IPA so let's try and work out now now this is here and drop this in place we need to find these wires and bring these wires around and under Right, so we've got hold of them, we know where they are. This needs to drop down and sit in place now. So it's sat in place there. So we should be able to plug that in. Plugged in there. Let's polish the sticky tape off. I'm going to put some more glue over the top of this so it doesn't fall off um, because these are crap. I've never known sticky tape stay down in my life forever. So that's to go down there. I'm trying to feed that in there now. Something like that. Let's twist that round. I'm going to stick it, can't really see, straight down like that. So we'll fire the glue gun up again. I'm not over keen on it, I just I run some glue down either side of it just to hold it in place. Once this is warmed up, we warmed up. Yeah, we've got some glue. So I'm gonna just put a blob down there. And put a blob at this side. That's all I want to do. I don't want to put any more hot glue in it because I don't like hot glue. Right, so that's held in place. I'm just going to flip the box over now and put these two screws in that we had for the bottom. So we found that little pad. It wasn't missing. It was stuck into the top of the lid. And put these back on. I'm hoping we're done. Moment of truth soon, guys. Moment of truth. So, am I going to be confident? Shall I put the lid on? Let's go for the lid. So here we are with the 2600 Paul put back together. Oh, wow, that was a bit of a pain in the backside. So I put it all back together and what did I find? I'd left the cardboard that goes over the joystick ports to hide all the background. The circuit board's in the back. So to strip it all back down again. So put that board back on, that little cardboard that were on there. Um, put it all back together, switched it on, fired it up, I thought, yes, fantastic. Um, but I could see a lot of interference on the screen and it just didn't look right for some reason. A little bit strange. Um, so I plugged it in, the joystick in, and I put the tank game on. And I'll put some pictures up and you can see what I'm talking about. And I put the tank game on and I had a little bit of a go on that with joystick port 2. So I swapped it and put it onto joystick port 1 and nothing. Joystick port 1 didn't work. So I swapped the game, I put Ghostbusters in, I played that previously. That's why I got them images to show you the comparisons. And nope, joystick port 1 did not work. So to strip it all back down again, um, inspect everything that I went over and I did. Um, and then I had a look at the joystick port connectors. And I'll pop you a picture up. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Bad solder joints. What that's from is these um, joystick port connectors. They don't get bolted down to the board, so they're loose. So every time you're plugging it in and pulling it out, it's working on the pins that go through the solder on the board. Um, and they just work loose. So coincidentally, that at the time when I've stripped it down, built it back up again, and replugged it back in, 
the, that final pin must have just broken away or it's lost its contact. So I've resoldered all the joystick port connectors. I went back over what I did and resoldered everything, uh, made sure all them little holes that were uh, that were empty had solder in them. Because um, you don't know the through hole, out there, you know. So you don't know if it's broken in between the through holes. So I filled up the holes with solder. And and then it still didn't look right good on the screen. It still bit looked a bit crappy, if you like. I can't think of any other word. It looked a bit dull um, and a bit fuzzy. When I wiggled the power connector, it sort of affected it. So I pulled it all back down again, stupidly. I should have connect checked this first. I pulled it all back to pieces again and I resoldered the power connector sockets because one of them were breaking away. So I've put it all back together again <laughs> and, and here we are now. Um, so this is the Atari 2600. They're a lovely machine. I think, I think, I think they did a black version where they, where they took the wood away um, and they didn't have the colouring around the edges here neither. Um, I think they called that a Darth Vader model. I think that were really really early models but yeah so here we are we're back here um, i'm gonna fire it up now and we'll have have a look at what it looks like under composite you might get a little bit of more air effect from my screen but i'll do what i can um, to try and ease that and what we'll, and i'll put some pictures up as well while you're having a look um, showing you what the rf comparison was like So there we go. I still think that, you see on lines going up and down the screen, I think when music plays, I think that's something to do with the um, power connector to be honest, because it's not always like it. Let's just have a wiggle on that power connector. Yeah. Well, it's certainly a hell of a lot better anyway than what it, what it was before. When we go back onto the other map screen, I'll I'll put the RF comparison up. You can have a look. See if we can catch one. Ah, no. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Obviously, there's no sound. It doesn't scream out Ghostbusters. Um, it's got its limitations as the Atari in comparison to like the C64. It's very close to the C64, but obviously the music's not as good because it ain't got the SID. Uh, and you ain't got the speech coming out as well, like when you get catch them in because Ghostbusters. Um, when you come back to the home on the C64, there's three men that come out and run along. Well, they're all together on that one. Just looks like one coming across. That's how you do it in the pros. <laughs> See if we can catch that ghost. It doesn't look like a ghost, it looks like a dog's left outside at a street. <laughs> oh, that was silly. Why did I press fire button? See if we can catch. Nah. <laughs> he slimed me. So, yeah, that's the uh, Atari. 2600 composite mod. Hi, so I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you learned a little bit from it. I certainly did. Um, I removed that resistor. You didn't need to be removing the resistor. Should have read it properly. It was Q202. Q, R, L. Tells you all different, doesn't it? The R's, the resistors. L is, I don't really know, it was that tall thing with the way around it. Um, and Q is obviously transistors. So that's all done. That all really looks good. There's lots coming up, guys. So 
do me a favor and subscribe hit the notification bell hit me a thumbs up drop us a comment do all the good youtube stuff and um, thank you to all the patreons and um, the supporters us. Um, we have got lots coming up um, i've picked up an atari ste um, and that has four megabytes inside it a little bit battered um, so I'm going to amalgamate it with the other Atari that you saw me repair before, you know, the one that the, uh, the bug killed, killed it. If you haven't seen that video, pop back, um, have a look at the playlist. Um, you can go a bit and watch that, that little, little bug that actually killed the, the computer. So that's the Atari that's coming. Uh, we've got a C16, as well that we picked up at the Doncaster Dub that doesn't work. Um, I've got some paddles for the Ataris. I'm going to convert them and see if I can get them to work on the Commodore 64. Um, I wanted some paddles for quite a while um, for the 64, but they are quite expensive. So I just thought I'd modify them ones for it. I don't think we're going to be using the paddles on an Atari. Um, thank you to Gary, who met us at the Doncaster Dome. Um, he's dropped off um, another Atari ST, but it's an NTSC model. He dropped off a monitor as well. Um, that's um, 110 volts. So we need to take a look at that, we don't know anything about it, as the previous owners plugged it into our UK voltage. Really don't know, hope not, um, but time will tell on that one. So I'm going to swap out the power supply in the Atari for Gary um, and get that up and running for him. Thanks very much Gary as well for, for giving me the um, Spectrum Plus 3 discs. I didn't have any, he did watch me video where I restored a Plus 3. Um, we stored it fully. I just I couldn't test the disk drive. Didn't have any discs. Where would you know it? Um, but I have now. So thanks a lot, Gary. Um, so yeah. So that's it for this week. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, next week there will be more videos coming up. Um, as I said, there's a C16. There's Atari STs. Um, I think there might be some Amiga stuff as well coming up too. I think that's going from another channels. Another we'll, we'll board to repair. Hmm. Oh, Retrobates. You've not seen Retrobates channel before. It does a lot of games reviews for the C64. Pop over and see Retrobate. So that's it for me. Um, I'll catch you next week. Bye.